Hey folks, Ira here. I hope you've had a great Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. Today is April the 20th, 2016. Today is also known as Volunteer Recognition Day. All right. Beginning last Thursday, April the 14th, the Earth has since been racked with powerful earthquakes nearly every day. We began with the 6.4 that struck Vanuatu and the 6.2 that hit Japan. The following day, Kumamoto, Shi, Japan was struck with a devastating magnitude 7. Then, on April the 16th, Ecuador was hit with a 7.8. Speaking of these areas, as you all know, the damage and the loss of life has been extreme. The death toll in Japan has reached 48 as of today. Conditions in Ecuador are unfortunately more bleak. The death toll has eclipsed over 500 along with more than 4,000 injured. Anyways, following these massive earthquakes, I was optimistic that we would see some relief as we had not only alleviated so much pressure from these powerful earthquakes, but from a series of volcanoes. Along with the 7.8 earthquake experienced on April the 16th, three volcanoes erupted simultaneously. We had the Vila Rica in Chile, Mount Cleveland along the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, and Colima in Mexico. Our optimism has since diminished considerably as earthquake activity around the globe has not subsided at all. We experienced a 6.0 that was later revised to a 5.9 strike Vanuatu on Monday the 18th. We then followed that up with a 5.9 that struck South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands yesterday. Not only this, but we've experienced interesting earthquakes along the Indian and Eurasian plates. Afghanistan has registered multiple earthquakes over the past few days, as has India. Here in the United States, we have been exposed to similar concerning seismic activity, specifically around Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. That's right, everyone's favorite supervolcano has been experiencing an earthquake swarm that not only began, but was identified through our program five days ago. If we look at the earthquake activity in just this region over the past three days, we'll see that well over 49 have been clocked in thus far, a quarter of which exceeded a magnitude 2. This has caught the attention of news outlets from around the world. More on this in just a moment though. Looking at today's activity, we see that only 190 have been registered thus far. The majority of the stronger quakes struck around the western limb of the Ring of Fire. There were some notable exceptions though. In fact, the strongest to strike the planet was a 6.1 that rocked Ecuador this morning. They have clocked in a total of four earthquakes thus far. The latest, another magnitude 6, just struck a few moments ago. We followed that up with a 5.8 that struck just off the coast of Barbados, care of the Atlantic Ocean. Looking along the Ring of Fire, we see that Japan was also rocked by a powerful 5.8. This was the only earthquake to strike the land of the rising sun today. Vanuatu continues to experience movement. They have clocked in three earthquakes thus far, a 5.9, a 4.9, and a 4.6. The Nadoi Island, Fiji, was hit by two, a 5.3, and a 4.6. Terran, Papua New Guinea, was shaken by a 5.1. And Indonesia was struck by two a 4.9 and a 4.5. Finally, the Philippines registered a 4.9. If we head across the Eurasian plate, we will see that Afghanistan has clocked in a 4.5 and a 4.8. Hawaii has been very busy today. They have clocked in nine, three of which have struck the volcano, the most intense there being a 2.1. Alaska has experienced only 36 today, seven of which struck Talkinta, the most intense there being at 4.3. Our pals in Washington continue to experience increased activity. 11 have struck the state today, three of which originated from Amboy. The strongest to hit the Evergreen state today was a magnitude 3 that struck Sella just moments ago. Oregon has clocked in five today, four of which originated from Lakeview. The strongest to strike the state was a 1.6. California has registered 70 for the day. The strongest experience was a 2.9 that hit Idlewild. Speaking of this location, Idlewild has experienced somewhat of an earthquake swarm, with seven earthquakes striking the area. Now let's look to Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. Wyoming clocked in five today. 
four of which originated from Hobok. The strongest to strike was a 2.6. Idaho has experienced only one today. This was a 1.2 in Victor. And finally, Montana has experienced nine today. The strongest to hit was a 2.5 out of Virginia City. Before we wrap things up, I would like to comment on a video that has been circulating recently. A fellow YouTuber by the name of Cap Martin posted a video on April the 15th, which was captured at night, and focuses on several Yellowstone steam vents. What has everyone on edge are the flashes of light that can be seen throughout the video. As you can expect, articles and reaction type videos have been popping up stating that Yellowstone is on the verge of erupting and that the light witness was from volcanic activity. This tale is actually spread around the world. In fact, I just read an article from the UK that claimed that the Yellowstone caldera could be about to erupt. I kid you not. I think this is another instance where we have people peddling fear for views and attention. I have watched the video myself and I do not see anything other than clouds moving across the sky. What I believe we are seeing are clouds blocking out or hampering the intensity of the moonlight. I know that in the description of the video, it states that the flashes of light were not from above as there were no shadows, but this doesn't really fall in line with my observations. The best I can tell, which is difficult because of the video quality, is that there are shadows from the various steam columns as they leave the earth. In closing, I would agree that the recent earthquake swarm is worthwhile of concern. I believe it is indicative of pressure mounting in the area and it could precede a substantial earthquake. I haven't come across any evidence though that would indicate that an eruption is imminent. I believe our focus for the next several days should fall on Afghanistan, India, Japan, South America, and possibly the West Coast. With earthquake intensity not decreasing, the data speaks to additional powerful earthquakes striking possibly in these locations. And that is it for the earthquake report. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you'd like to comment on our analysis of the events taking place in Yellowstone or anything else, please post below. We'd like to hear from you. Make certain to like and subscribe, share if you feel inclined. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. We'll end this report with a video feed from our favorite star. Have a great night, guys. Hoorah! Hoorah!